Well, hello friends. Welcome back to the program. Today, we're going to continue working on our JavaScript JIT compiler in libjs. And uh, it's going to be a shorter video because there are a bunch of cleanups that I would like to do specifically in the uh, assembler helper class that we've been working on in the last couple of videos. So um, I started feeling a little bit bad that I'm doing so much emit spam, which is essentially like um, emitting raw machine code like this for a bunch of push instructions. Now, just because I can read this and the machine can read this doesn't mean that it's very good factoring and that every other developer who's going to touch this code can read it. So I thought, you know, today we are going to nice this up a little bit and make some some helper functions to to do these kind of things in a more abstract way. So we would say something like um, reg rcx here, right? And um, that I can't do that yet because reg rcx doesn't exist. Our register struct or enum here actually refers to uh, these sort of made up names that I have, like general purpose registers uh, 0 and 1, and then argument registers and so on. And I think we're going to start by moving this whole thing into um, the JIT compiler. And we'll put those here, let's say, so that uh, the JIT compiler can continue to refer to these, but they're moving out of the assembler, and then we'll let the assembler have just, uh, you know, the good old uh, x86 registers specifically named instead. So like all of these things and maybe Copilot can be a good boy and fill them in for me. Oh, come on, you can go a little bit faster. Okay, maybe I have to do it myself. Okay, and then 8 through 15, please. <laughs> Not in the mood. Okay, come on now. Sometimes Copilot offers one line at a time, sometimes a whole blob of stuff. I don't know if there's anything I can do to trigger the whole blob more often or less often, but uh, in this case, it felt like could have inferred most of this after <laughs> receiving the first couple of lines. Anyway, uh, now that we have this thing here, this is now what an assembler reg is, uh, which means that in the JIT compiler, we can do something more like to underlying assembler reg rax, right? Uh, we don't have to have these magical constants because we just fetch out the the correct enum value from the assembler instead by doing this. So maybe we can can we get these automatically? No. To uh, there we go. And just a ret as well. Cool. Uh, not quite. Reg R8 and R9. And a nice thing about this is that this fix me kind of gets deleted because the reason for this fix me was that I don't want to be putting uh, libjs specific stuff in the assembler class because the idea is to eventually take this class and uh, put it into a shareable library uh, where other parts of the system can use it. So now we get to do this. And um, this also makes me aware that I am using reg in a bit of a weird way here because it's enum class, although I'm not going to be using it like that. I'm going to be, I'm using it more like a collection of registers so maybe we should call it like registers or something um, and then these are not enum values but rather uh, static const expert auto let's say and we should probably follow screaming case for those since they are now constant um, yeah And we shouldn't use two underlying. This should be the proper enum type. OK, so something like that. Um, maybe we'll call it red, red registers. Oh, no, something like that. Registers is pretty good. 
Um, or we can also call it nothing. That might be fine as well. And they can just be private const expert stuff in here. That makes this a lot more terse. So we can, instead of this, we can just say register array base. And instead of this whole thing, we can just say arch one. That is kind of cool. Okay. It's just going to fix all these up. Um, we got ret right here. Okay, just a couple of these. Uh, assembler reg GPR1. All right, so now that we have that, we should be in good shape. So let's see if I can actually build this. And does it run our program? Yes, it does. Cool. And this, of course, is the generated machine code going to standard out. So <laughs> it's not misbehaving. This is expected behavior. OK, so let's just say like libjsjit um, add make assembler uh, reg represent x86 registers and move the generic uh, registers to JIT compiler and let them be register aliases or whatever, yeah. Okay, so this should make it a little bit easier to work on the assembler because now we can reference registers, x86 registers by their name directly here. So, if we look at the native call, um, then now we can turn these into something much nicer. So like push operand register reg RCX. And then we should be able to do that for all of these. Can I get a little hand here? Thank you. Thank you, Copilot. Is the new thank you to the bus driver. Um, OK, so that's pretty good. And then we need, of course, corresponding pops down here. So we'll do those as well. It's going to be a lot nicer. Hello. And we are good. All right. So actually, let's remove that white space. And then let's implement these functions. So push operand. And thank you, copilot. So let's see if op type is reg. Yeah, we could. There are uh, instruction encodings for pushing immediate values as well, but we don't use those at the moment. We don't need them. So we'll leave that as a task for our future selves if we feel like using those. But I don't think this is going to be entirely correct because if it's if we're pushing an extended register, so like R8 or above, uh, we do need a rex prefix here. So um, we need a 48 or um, this kind of thing. And Actually, I think we only need this if we are um, if we are emitting an extended extended register push. So if we're not, I think we can get away without a rex prefix, which would probably be a little nice. So we can just emit that raw. It's just to give us access to um, the register. And Poppity pop. Same basic idea. Mm. Not confident that that's correct there, bruh. I think probably going to want 49 for that one as well. 
That is um, the rex prefix with the least significant bit set, which should modify the register that we're using. But let's actually verify that. Oh, seg fault. Okay, maybe <laughs> maybe I'm doing something wrong. What am I doing wrong? Let's see. Push and then pop. Oops. Um, wait. Two underlying. Two underlying is not what I want to be doing here. I want to be doing uh, encode reg. Okay, yeah, that that went a little bit a goof, but quick recovery. Encode reg just takes the bottom three bits of the uh, underlying value of the enum. What on earth? Oh, it's uh, printing something to standard out at the end. <laughs> um, actually, it looks like it's printing a bunch of stuff to standard out. What are we printing? Oh, the um, bytecode program? Wait, is that it? Or no, it's probably this stuff right here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, all right, all right. No, it's not. Hmm. Okay, this looks better. So our pushes now look good, and our pops look good, and they look better in code in particular. And of course, we still have our emits here in push and pop, but like at some point, you have to actually fiddle with the, the raw encoded um, instructions. But I think at least we can uh, have a high-level push and pop API. So that makes it a little bit easier. Add uh, sim libjs jit. Add similar push and pop helpers. OK, and then here I'll be doing a sub, um, sub RSP by 8 bytes to align the stack to 16-bit boundary before the call. Um, so I think we can maybe express that as a sub operand register. Um, yeah, like this. Wouldn't that be nice? And likewise, when we're adjusting the stack pointer back again after returning from the call, we could even do a um, add operand like that. Uh, those would be nice APIs to have as well. So how would add look? Can you figure it out for me? Mm. Operand source. OK. So what did we get? Um, adding a register to a register. We're doing a rex prefix with the bits set. That looks good. Instruction 1 looks good. Registers encoded here in the mod RM byte looks correct as well. Okay, and then adding an M32 to a register. Um, we want to use an M8 in our case because we're just adding the, the number that we're adding, 8, fits in an 8 bit value. So we don't need the full 32 bit um, version of this. And that's actually the, uh, the version that I was requesting to use here as well, although Copilot didn't figure that out, but we can work it out. So DST type is type reg. And can you guess what I want? Yes, very good. So right, we have the 32-bit immediate um, instruction 81, and then the 8-bit immediate instruction 83. Other than that, it looks Good. Um, so let's do the same thing for sub. And maybe you can figure that out for me based on what we just did with add. Taking a moment, but there we are. OK, let's check these out. So we got instruction 29 to subtract, register, register, uh, and then we have uh, 81 and 83, wait, hmm, are those correct? 
Okay, I have to um, now I have to check. So Leon gave me a website called FelixCloutier.com, um, which is the x86 instruction reference as a web page, which is slightly nicer than looking at the PDF. So thank you, Leon. Um, let's see. So I wanted to look at add, right? So add, is it one of those slash instructions? Right, 83 slash zero, uh, which means that it's uh, probably the sub starts in the same way, 83 slash something else, um, when you're adding with a with an immediate, where are you, sub, uh, there we are, yeah, 83 slash 5. So the slash here refers to um, a, a part of the mod RM byte, so uh, a, th a three bit field and the following byte after the instruction um, not this field right here. So I guess uh, the field that's like uh, three bits to the left of the bottom bits, uh, <laughs> if that makes sense, are going to contain five in the sub case and zero in the add case, which um, we can actually see here. So C0, you have zeros in those bits and you're putting the register in the bottom bits. And we have E8 here. Um, so we'll, that gives us a five in the um, three bits that are three steps from the left of the bottom, <laughs> if that makes sense. So I think I think this is accurate. Um, let's see if it compiles to the same assembly that we had before. Um, let's see. And uh, it seems to do the sub nicely and the add nicely using an eight bit immediate, very, very nice. Um, not bloating up the instruction stream. So very cool. Uh, I think, uh, you know, putting a little time into adding these kind of helpers is just going to make working with uh, working with the assembler more pleasant, because then we'll be able to reference these things directly. And I'm not 100% sure that this is going to pan out perfectly, but my thinking is that um, the assembler interface that we're using here uh, is going to be generic enough that we can uh, implement a backend for 64-bit um, ARM or RISC-V5 or whatever, and we will um, make sure that the, the, the API that we offer, the public API that we offer in assembler is simple enough that it's sort of a, a lowest common denominator that all different um, architecture can support. Uh, so stuff like, you know, like push like this, of course, should probably be, should maybe be an internal operation. Uh, I don't know, we'll, we'll discover what what can be public and, and what needs to be private and arch architecture specific. Um, one step at a time, though. Add assembler, add and sub helpers, sure. And then here we're loading the callee into RAX and then calling RAX. So we're doing one of these things right here because you can't do a call to an absolute 64-bit address, as far as I know. Uh, there's no such instruction, so you have to load the callee address into a register before calling it. But we actually have a helper already for this part, so we should be able to do like mov. Um, mov rax and then load the callee into there like like that but we can use bitcast too uh, and then this is a call call rax essentially um, which i'm not sure we need to have that one as a special thing because i'm i don't know that we're going to be making many calls outside of this function so i'm not terribly worried about this one. Okay. But I, I think using the mov that we already have here is good. And does it still work? Yeah, that looks good. Looks very, very nice and tidy. That is a great. And yeah, um, I got a bunch of comments on the last videos, by the way, about like, oh, if you encode 
these instructions in this particular way, or you uh, juggle the registers in that way, then it will be more efficient, it will help um, instruction level parallelism and so on. And of course, I'm not doing everything optimally here. Um, there will be plenty of time to investigate what are the actual optimal encodings and trying to um, tune the code to emit better assembly. But um, at this point, I'm not going to sweat every single instruction that we generate that it's optimal because that will uh, <laughs> slow down the process of writing the JIT substantially, I would think. Um, so yeah, let, let's let's not get bogged down with that. Okay. Uh, that's not to say that I don't appreciate people sharing this kind of information. It's uh, it's really fun to see um, like how much people know about this stuff, about like uh, which instructions go well together and, and uh, kind of assembly level tricks that you can do with uh, rotates and shifts and stuff. Uh, all that's great. And uh, the, the, there's going to be ample opportunities to apply all that knowledge <laughs> to this code soon enough. Um, but the thing that we are going to do right now is commit this. So let's see, webjs, um, use mov helper in native call. Sure. Um, bum, bum, bum. Actually, let me say assembler native call just to make the context less implied. And I have a not used function here. I think we have two not used function in this thing. Um, I also have um, the less than function, I think. Yeah, that one <laughs> we inherited from my original toy VM that I did in the first video in the series. So I think we're just going to get rid of that one and it will still build. Uh, actually, increment we can probably get rid of it as well because that's also from there. Um, yeah. Oh, look at this little thing. It's growing up to be nicer and nicer. Isn't that cool? Okay. Libjs jit remove unused functions from assembler. Okay. Right, so I think this is going to be it for today's video, um, a shorter one, but I wanted to do these kind of cleanups, and at first I thought, oh, I'm just going to do these without recording, but then we would lose the nice <laughs> continuation that we have going on in the videos as a series at the moment. Uh, so I decided to record it. I hope that we saw something interesting, and I'm sure that there are more things we can do to make this even nicer. Uh, there are definitely, yeah, there's definitely jank <laughs> in various places, but I, I got a couple of the cleanups that were irritating me specifically out of the way, so that's good. Um, so this would be the end of the video, but we'll be back soon enough. Uh, if you made it here, thanks for watching, for hanging out. I uh, hope to see you next time, and uh, bye.